You guys ready for some university level education for um Prager University? Yeah. This is what they're teaching the kids at the universities these days. The truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Amen. Let's see what they have to say about Che Guevara that I've literally already talked about a hundred times before. I've made ten videos on this topic. And they still keep saying the same shit. The war, we've lost folks. It's over. I can't compete with the Prager University. I'm not a university. I'm just a fucking empanada. I'm a foodstuff. What am I supposed to do against this? There's nothing. Imagine wearing a t-shirt or displaying a poster, or waving a flag, and blade- Oh, uh, hey, it's, it's the, the Guatemala's dictatorship was good woman. Glad she could join us. Listen ...with the face of a brutal killer who openly expressed racist anger at blacks and indigenous people. When they say blacks like that, you know that they're fucking racist, man. No one says blacks like that. People say black people. Like blacks, that just reeks of contempt. Yet PragerU somehow doesn't get it, like this script probably went through like 10 revisions and no one caught the word blacks, which heavily implies that whoever's fucking writing this shit doesn't even think about like trying to look decent or anything. They just straight up go for it. They just straight up go for the dog whistle. And on this guy's disgust for gays. Well... Gays too. I don't know, I feel like this is like directly translated from Spanish, but I doubt that she wrote it herself. It's not something you have to imagine. It's done every day. Man, her eyes are like she's gonna fucking eat my soul, man. This is like my sleep paralysis demon. Every time I fucking wake up, I'm like, this no, don't fucking eat me, Gloria Alvarez. No! No, don't look at me! Somewhere on a college campus or at a social justice protest, somebody is celebrating a psychopath. Based. The famous face, of course, belongs to Ernesto Che Guevara. It's one of the most perverse jokes in modern life that so many people, especially young people, exalt him as a hero. Strange hero. He personally murdered or had murdered and personally tortured or had tortured thousands- They like add so many accolations here that it's hard to even tell what they're saying. Thousands of Cuban citizens. He would have happily murdered and tortured many more if he had lived longer. Source? The only thing that stopped him was a bullet. He was killed in 1967 at the age of 39, trying to organize a communist- It's interesting how like the bullet like literally went straight through his head and like cut his brain off. That looks pretty weird. This revolution in Bolivia. They say only the good die young. Che was an exception. But Che still captures the popular imagination. Why? Hell if I know. Unless you're into sadistic thug worship, I am at a loss. That's a great frame. Like, is this really the moment where you're going to put the fucking sliding text on the screen? You think that was such a great line that yeah, you got to do the sliding text, sadistic fog worship. Oh man. There's like nothing to even refute here. They're not even really making concrete claims of a source, right? But I mean, I have like 10 fucking videos on this shit. Maybe it's as simple as this. People don't really know anything about what Che actually did. Only what they think he did. They think he- When I learned about what Che Guevara did, I liked him more. He was a handsome, sexy, hip, brainy- Music in a, in a PragerU video, this is unprecedented. They're going all out with the production values here. They really want you to hate Che Guevara. Revolutionary who sought freedom and equality for his people. A Hispanic Robin Hood. A martyr who sacrificed himself for others. In short, a tragic symbol of righteous rebellion. Except, this is nonsense. Ooh. The real Che was a murderous, homophobic, racist, hypocrite. Yet Che flags are a feature at Black Lives Matter protests. I'm just gonna keep making these assertions without actually backing them up at all. There's three minutes left. Go figure. Here is Che on race. The black is indolent. So they're going back to the one quote, right? From his diary when he was 21 years old. I get this woman is openly racist, more racist than this today and a dreamer, spending his meager wage on frivolity or drink. Che explicitly stated that his vision of socialist utopia- This one, I've fucking seen this shit so much, man. I already know this stuff. This quote is fucking not real. It's completely fake. Yeah, did not include blacks. We're going to do for blacks exactly what blacks did for the revolution, he said. By which I mean nothing. Okay, I already know the fucking source for this. There it is. Finally, there's this line after the revolution, by which I mean nothing. This this came from fucking Marco Rubio's team, um, claiming that. 
Some sources on the internet claim that it is from a 1959 speech or press conference, but were unable to find a single source or context for the quote. It doesn't exist. This was made up, and I know exactly who made it up. I can't show you the book because it's copyrighted, but I own, I have a copy of it. It's his fucking name, Umberto Fontava. He made it up in a 2006 book. He's a Cuban exile, lives in Miami. Just basically his job is to make shit up and write books about Cuba. And it just includes completely made up shit. What Che Guevara actually did after the revolution is he led the integration of, um, of universities in Cuba. Essentially, immediately after the revolution, he went around, you know, he, he toured universities in Cuba and gave speeches about the, need, the, the necessity of them integrating the black population as soon as possible. So, but he basically did the exact opposite to this. And that evidence otherwise is, is, is one quote from when he was like 21 years old and long before he had any political formation and actually became a communist. And another quote which is just completely made up and which actually contradicts everything that he actually did. So yeah. Or how about this? The blacks, those magnificent examples of the African race who have maintained their racial purity thanks to their lack of an... This is literally, this is from the first quote. This is like the next sentence of the first quote. So they're presenting like one quote as two different quotes. They just cut it out. Because like, I guess they needed three quotes, right? But they could only find two, one of which is completely fa fake. So they just said, oh, we'll just cut up the first one, you know, so that we can reach the magic number of three. Infinity with bathing. If you want to cancel George Washington or Thomas Jefferson, what do you do with Che? That's a really weird point because, okay, so we have Che Guevara who said racist things when he was 20 years old, an ignorant white rich kid from Argentina without any political education whatsoever who completely changed his ideas later. And we have George Washington and Th Thomas Jefferson who literally owned black people and raped them constantly. Wow. What a comparison there. Do you think you might be going, you think there's just no comparison there at all maybe? I believe that there's not really a comparison there and um, I'm willing to die on that hill because I think it's a hill that is a very easy win for me in this battle. The answer is you give him a pass. As the saying goes from the French Revolution, there are no enemies to the left. We see a similar confusion. That doesn't make any sense. Wow, we give, we give him a pass? Yeah, because he didn't own slaves. He, did, he didn't own and rape slaves. It's a pretty easy distinction there. Pretty fuck. It's, it's a pretty simple one. If you if you want the same exemption that Che gets, try not raping your slaves. Easy game, easy life. Not too difficult. Among the LGBTQ crowd, Che's face decorates many a pride poster and a rainbow t-shirt. This is the one for which there is literally zero evidence. So this is the best part. And yet, Che was on. Like for this one, they can't even try to spin the evidence because there's no evidence to spin. So they just have to make it up. An apologetic homophobe. He called gay men perverts. He Where? locked them up in camps and forced them to labor under a sign that read, work will make you men. Again, this is literally shit that was made up within the last decade by right-wing think tanks and Umberto Fontava. Che left Cuba before there were any, there were, you know, there was any sort of imprisonment of gay people for any reason at all. In 2017- You guys notice how they're like making him like black? Isn't it fucking weird how they're making him black? This is what you see with right-wingers a lot in Latin America is they will, like, um, blacken the skin tone of anyone who they don't like. Even if it's, like, unambiguously a white guy. Like, Che Guevara is a straight-up white guy, right? His ancestry is, like, fucking Irish and Spanish. So he's 100%. He's the most generic white guy you could possibly imagine. But because they want you to dislike him, they're making his skin darker. To the point that he's basically being passed off as like an an African guy. I'll show you some more examples of this before we move on. Um, okay, I'm gonna search for a fucking amazing search term here. Here's the original version of this photo. Okay, it's a it's a heavy set Teamsters Union man eating a eating a fucking choripan with a knife. But in the media, this photo was taken and blackened to this. Okay, to make him, make, make, make the, the audience hate him more. They, they did this with Obama in the USA as well. Another thing that they do is, um, they, they always, they always bring out this gigantic fucking balloon of, um, of Christina Kirshner, who we just saw. I'll show you a picture of what she actually looks like. And she's white. Again, she's white. Generic white lady. Enough. Okay, so she's white. You can see. She's white, okay? But when the right, when the right wing, um, wants to represent her, they make her black, dark-skinned. 
right? Because they're racist and they think that if you blacken someone's skin, it's like a subtle indicator that, that the viewer should hate them more, okay? Same thing with this guy here who she's, you know, has as a puppet in this representation. He's, he's also been blackened. He's also white. Literally the whitest fucking fuck you could possibly imagine, right? And they make him black or at least brown too. And when I saw that thing with Che Guevara there, like the, the way they're making him black, you know, ex you know why it is, it's the same thing. They're clearly being racist here depicting Che as, as um, brown. In 2017, HuffPost published an article titled, Are You Gay? In HuffPost published an article hated titled- you, blah, blah. That's specifically the article that I debunked in my video on Che Guevara. On Che Guevara, is he a homophobe slash racist? Are you gay? It's all the exact same fake quotes and talking points being recycled and recycled and recycled. They don't fucking care that it's fake because the moronic people who watch these videos are gonna lap it up. Che Guevara would have sent you to a concentration camp. The crusading humanitarian is not exactly checking the intersectional boxes, is he? Well, he definitely didn't do anything that they're saying that he did so far, aside from one single quote about hating gay people, which he said when he was like 20 years old. I mean, about hating black people, which he said when he was like 20 years old. And everything else so far is just completely fake. Like a good Marxist, he claimed to despise luxuries and creature comforts. Hey, they fucked up their subtitles here. Yet, his Havana home... I don't think any Marxist says that you should not have comforts, but... I'm pretty was sure that's gonna... mansion with a swimming okay. pool, seven bathrooms. I've never heard this one before. Where'd they get this Oops. one from? Are they gonna give us a, a fucking source? I really want to see it. I really want to find uh, this a one's massage new. Massage room, a private yacht harbor, and five TVs. Not exactly an anti-materialist setup. That doesn't make any sense. Marcus are literally materialists. Not exactly an anti-materialist setup. Now I'm gonna fucking go and live. I'm gonna go and live in a fucking mansion now. And I'm gonna say, well, I am. I am a materialist after all. This is historical materialism in action. It's justified, folks. Give me your money. Bad empanada. Don't you think it's kind of a bad look for you to beg for money all the time when you're supposed to be a communist? I'm. A, I'm a materialist, man. This is how it works. This is what materialism is. Get used to it. The setup. Of course, he acquired this modest abode not by working for it, but at the end of a gun. In short, he's- well, they, they just made that up. They definitely just made that up. Is there sources? Nope. Oh, facts and sources. Okay. View source. Yep, it's from fucking Fontava, Fontava. Same fucking guy. Fontava, Fontava, Fontava. There he is. Of course it is. This one just- they didn't even feel- just add. Add. Someone add. Can someone please add source? We need add here. This one's also Fontava. Let's go through all the sources. Let's see which ones are real. It's um, an article by Alvaro Vargas Llosa. This guy is the son of Mario Vargas Llosa. His, his job is that he's the, he's the son of a famous person and he's a your generic far right winger who makes shit up without actually citing anything. None of it is real. Let's see, indigenous. What does he cite for him hating indigenous people? Nothing. Black. This one doesn't even say anything about racism. So I'm confused, but whatever, you know. He tried to organize a communist revolution in Bolivia. Well, that's not exactly something that you need to provide a source for. This one's from the Motorcycle Diaries, which is real. This one's completely fake. On, again, Fontava. They literally cite it. Fontava. Half post article, Fontava. The revolutionary leader had the bourgeois enemy of the state dispatched. The politically incorrect guide to communism, okay. Before Fidel- Oh, they, they defend! They defend Batista. Let's see. Let's see. Stole it. This, according to Professor of Political Science Paul Kenger, is a- Oh, Paul Kenger, Professor of Political Science, said this? Damn! I am fucking in. I cannot believe it. You cannot contest Paul Kenger, Professor of Political Science. Paul Kenger? Look at his face. Would this face lie to you? Exclamation of communism in practice. The revolutionary leader has the bourgeois enemy of the state dispatched, appropriates his property in the name of the worker, and then claims it for himself. She takes the Fontava quote about the made up thing about oh, Che Guevara got a mansion, blah, blah, blah. And then she links it with some other guy saying something else, presumably based on something else. Interesting stuff. But of the things Che was, most of all, he was a liar. He lied Thanks. about everything. He lied about being a doctor. He wasn't. There is no record that he ever graduated from medical school. There literally is. 
He lied about being a military genius. He wasn't. He budged just about every- What does it mean he lied about being a military genius? Did, did, did he say I was a military genius? I don't, I'm not really sure about that. And he, he was one of the most important commanders during the Cuban Revolution. And in fact, he led, he led the troops at the pivotal battle of Santa Clara. Military operation he ever led. Just about every, I mean, every aside from like 50 during the Cuban Revolution, maybe. Aside from those. He lied about knowing how to manage an economy. In fact, he trashed a growing Cuban economy during his brief span as Ministry of Industries. Oh, so the economy beforehand was growing, right? And it's all Che Guevara's fault if it didn't grow more. Now they're going to defend Batista. People have long forgotten that Cuba in the 1950s. Oh, 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 here we go. I'm excited. Before Fidel and Che took over, was one of the strongest economies in Latin America. According to a 1957 UN report, the average wage for an eight hour day in Cuba is higher than for workers in Belgium, Denmark, France, and Germany. Like, are they going to like some random obscure report? that no one's ever heard of because they can't actually cite the economic data because it shows all this to be false. Ra a UN report from the History News Network. From Humberto Fontava. Oxford published book. The Oxford published book. It seems this guy just keeps mentioning the Oxford published book. So it, it claims that there is a report from an international, from an interna from the International Labour Organization, which is not cited from 1957. It's just from, it's just from a UNESCO report, just a report, which doesn't even have a name. So you're probably not going to be able to find it anywhere. It's just from a report. Who knows if it exists or not? I can tell you right now that work is in Cuba, which had about 10 times less GDP per capita than work is in Belgium. We're not getting paid more than work is in Belgium, especially because if you were, if you were uh, an agricultural worker in Cuba at this time, you were a seasonal worker who wasn't officially registered. As a worker anyway, you were working illegally, informally. That's how it worked. You just showed up and hoped that there was work and the sugar fields or whatever, and you worked. This is how basically Fontava works, right? Like he's, he'll cite something and he hopes that you don't actually look for it because it doesn't exist. Like they hate the Cuban revolution so much that they, that they go as far as trying to make it out like um, that Batista was good, right? What may be worse than Chess' endless lies about himself is that so many people lied for him. I'm talking about the left-leaning journalist, fucking left-leaning journalist, a and Hollywood, stars, Hollywood and stars and directors. Classic left-leaning Hollywood stars and directors. They are the ones who built up, marketed, and have perpetuated the constellation of falsehoods that surround the hate field. That's really weird because I don't think there was even like a a mainstream movie about Che Guevara until like 40 years after he died. Revolutionary. Why did they do it? One simple reason. You notice how they didn't specifically name anyone, I think because they want to avoid a defamation lawsuit. Because Che personifies anti-Americanism, hatred for the- I mean, you're just making me like him more. United States. That's what the Che obsession is really all about. That's based. I mean, that's not what it's really all about. At least in Latin America, where he's most revered, but I mean, it's, you know, it's much more about the fact that he's a symbol among the poor of everything that she thinks that he isn't. But the fact that he apparently personifies anti-Americanism, that just makes me like him more. And if you watch my videos, it should make you like, like you more too. Anti-Americanism based. So if you hate America, I guess Che is as good a symbol as any. Why don't you just start with that? We could have just skipped the fucking video. But that says as much about you as it does about the psychopath you are celebrating. I'm Gloria Alvarez for Prager University. Yeah, that was basically just another one of these videos that just recite literally the exact same, the exact same talking points that have, that were already debunked as just based on complete falsehoods years and years ago. I debunked them two fucking years ago now, man, it's been two years. Since I made my first video on these on these this Che Guevara debunk stuff, and my second one I think it was in October 2019, and everything I see it's it's all the exact same talking points. They don't fucking care. It doesn't matter. Like if you, I guess it's just like if you say something, if you say something enough, it becomes the truth in the eyes of um total morons. So it doesn't really matter. I guess I lost, guys. I lost to Prague University. What? I, as I said, like what can I do? I'm just a, I'm just a poor empanada. A stuffed pastry. 
what can I do about it? You know, Prager University, you've won. You've won the 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 making up fake quotes and um fake events challenge. I mean, I, I concede. I, I can't. I'm not going to make Che Guevara videos until the end of my life, just repeating literally the exact same things that I've already said 20 times before. But I mean, if they upload one, I can at least go over it on stream and upload a video to this stream clip channel, which you're probably watching now. So there's that, I guess. It's lost the debate to a PragerU video. Well, actually, I won the debate in terms of factual information, but I lost it in terms of them getting um, 500,000 views just literally from reciting the exact same shit as always. So I lost it practically, but I won it in spirit. And what is leftism if not winning in spirit? Average writer is not capable of critical thought. They don't know how to think, hmm, Maybe I, maybe I should try to find a source for these things they're telling me. Hmm, maybe the source that they give me made this up. I wonder what the original source is. They're never going to ask those questions. I mean, half the comments on my videos about Che are just people saying, basically, like, they show up in the comments and they say, No. I disagree. You can't just fucking disagree. Their sources literally don't exist. Your disagreement isn't going to make them exist. Because for you to be right, those sources would need to exist, but they don't exist, so you literally can't be right. This is not an opinion. There's no room for you to disagree here. Either the source exists or they don't. And they're just like, no, I disagree. Fucking Chad face. That's my attempt at a Chad. Man, it literally wasn't even close. This is me when I'm Chad. It's the idiot's veto. I just, I'm, it's probably a thing that already exists. Let's Google it. Idiot's veto. Just no, I disagree. Apparently that the term has been used once before, so I just coined the idiot's veto. The idiot's veto is when you, you spend a month making a YouTube video and you prove exhaustively that the sources that these people cite don't actually exist and were invented by some fucking loser in Miami like 10 years ago. And then someone shows up and he's like, pretend these are sunglasses. No, I disagree. That's the idiot's veto. I just invented it. Anyway, yeah, Prager University, everyone. Give them a nice clap. Yay, my favorite university. Woohoo. Great work.